talk about the formation of a plume, you know, we can think in terms uh, if we have a fire uh, occurring you know, at the base of the fire, what's happening here? That should be the letter B. All right, so at the formation, what's happening to the fuel? Well, it's undergoing combustion, so it's releasing products, right? So byproducts uh, is, of course, soot, so the smoke. But, uh, you know, also within that byproduct is CO2, water, water vapor, as well as CO, and other gases like hydrogen, cyanide. So all those are byproducts going into this plume. So as these, um, as combustion is occurring, that temperature uh, is elevating because we're not, typically we're not having complete combustion. So if we, you know, had complete combustion, uh, you think back to a diffusion fire, you know, out of a gas burner, uh, very small flame, um, very blue, almost white light in nature, it's very efficient. So it's closer to, you know, one in efficiency uh, than our diffusion fire, which is, you know, can be more turbulent in nature. It can uh, not be steady and it's burning. And so it's going to burn less efficiently. And as a result, you know, you're going to have byproducts. In particular, you're going to have heat. So heat is going to um, be certainly a byproduct the more inefficient burning that's happening. So as the temperature elevation uh, increases, this is causing the gases to increase in volume. They become less dense. And so as a result, where are they going to go? Right, they're going to go up. And that's what's causing this plume to happen. So as these gases move upward, uh, along with the soot, you know, this is part of that thermal plume that's happening. So uh, we do have, you know, opposing forces. So air, uh, you know, certainly opposing this plume. But because these gases are less dense than the surrounding air, you know, there's only so much opposing force that's occurring. But the more um, elevated in temperature those products are, the more buoyant the gases can become, and so the higher it can raise. So along with um, determining that, we can we can determine, you know. In a plume, if we needed to know, you know, what's this temperature in the plume uh, at the the top of the plume? So this can become important. You know, you think about activation of a smoke detector or uh, activation of a sprinkler. If it's, um, you know, if we need to know what's the upper layer temperatures for structural materials. So all of those are things we might be concerned with uh, in determining that temperature of the plume. So if we look back here, this keeps coming up, right? So we talked about virtual origin. Virtual origin is a function then of uh, the plume temperature. So it's related to the height of the compartment along with ambient and the heat release rate. Now, with that, we might also be looking at the jet, the ceiling jet, right? And we might be concerned with what's the velocity of that gas as it rises, um, you know, so we can determine in the center line of the plume. Uh, what that gas velocity is going to be, and that's going to affect how quickly uh, a jet is created and how quickly those gases are going to move through the jet. So again, with uh, velocity, we're a function of the virtual origin 
the height of the compartment and the heat release rate. Thank you.